You ran into some rough water for your conduct after the case, correct? Years after, All absolutely. Right. Tell us what happened. Well, a couple of years after the Avery case was done, I had developed a dependence on uh, prescription drugs, also had uh, sexual compulsivity that I later got treatment for, but those behaviors manifested itself in texting a crime victim. I had my own scandal. Uh, this was in Making a Murderer, it was something I absolutely like to talk about because I'm very proud of my recovery journey and the things that have happened uh, since that. I felt, however, it was unfair because it was several years after the trial itself to put into the documentary to suggest that somehow that uh, related to the Avery case, it certainly did not. One could say if, if you could blur the boundaries there, you could blur the boundaries somewhere else. Right. I understand that, absolutely, I get that, but there is nothing, no evidence, no suggestion that any of these behaviors were present during or before the Avery trial, and I think it's unfair once they know that uh, to include that in the documentary. There were 15 women that came forward and, and, and made statements to the Department of um, Criminal Investigation in Wisconsin, and some of those went back to 1999, before, long before the Avery trial. So, how many, how many of those were unfounded, Jerry? You'd like to to spout this off, were any of those ever founded? You just said there was no evidence, and there were... F there was no evidence of it, and the that's the fact, The Gary. ethics board brought... The fact brought is they dismissed all of those things. The you ethics board to, made those allegations. It, the ethics board made those allegations. They ultimately settled on dismissed. one. Dismissed. They ultimately dismissed. You can say the word, Jerry. They dismissed those allegations against me. 